Hi there folks and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. It's been about 32 days since I posted my last video. I've been busy trying to catch up on some other projects. I'm back out in here, out in the shop today. I'm going to show you some of the things I've done. Last video prior to this one, I moved my uh, yard barn, a free 8x12 yard barn. Stuck that into the backyard. Uh, take a look at that video if you haven't seen it. I was able to move it all by myself, just myself me myself and i as one guy said uh so it was three of us there i guess but i had the willpower to get it here got it here i'm gonna have to show you what i did with it i turned it into a motor home let me show you what i mean by that now i know the lighting ain't very good in here but that's okay uh i was able to line up so far 24 outboard motors into this thing so i put a 2 by 10 on a pallet i salvage uh the two by tens, yeah, at least two by tens, along the wall, about nine inches away from the wall and 36 inches to the top of them. And that will house in a 12, an eight by 12 yard barn, you can safely store 24 outboard motors. I'm pretty happy about that. That was 24 outboard motors I had on stands in the shop that I don't have in there anymore. They're secured out here, cold storage, so to speak. And as I get the ones I've got left in the shop, uh, fixed and running and possibly sold I will start back in on bringing these in one by one so let's just say I got plenty of video content coming for you folks out there let's go back in the shop and talk about a couple more things well as you can see out there that relieved a lot of pressure out of the shop I don't have all those outboard motors on stands in the shop they're out there now problem I do have now is I still got about four one, two, three, four, five of these old engine stands that I built that I don't need in here anymore, per se. Uh, the, I've got two of them underneath a little bench right here, a makeshift bench right here, and two more over there that are three foot wide. They'll hold, you know, three outboards each, and I've got another one that holds five. I don't need that anymore. So I'm going to take a little bit of time here and shrink those down so they're only wide enough for one outboard motor, so they'll take up a lot less space. And then we're going to dump in, jump into this 35 horse that had a blown head gasket last fall or maybe a year ago now. And we're going to put that head gasket back on, see if we get our compression back up where it needs to be. Put the gearbox back on it because I pulled it off thinking I could use it on another outboard that ran really good and it did not fit. I'm going to put that back in place and then we're going to throw it in the tank and see if we can make it run. Because I have a feeling it'll run. So, and we'll do some more checking over some other things. Uh, I did a lot of cleaning up on it when I did take it apart, so it's all ready to go back together. I got all the parts I need to put it back together, except with the guard, in regards to the, maybe the thermostat, because it did overheat and blow the head gasket. So we'll dig back into it and refresh ourselves on what's going on with that particular outboard right after I get this uh, little bit of cleaning up done. Enjoy a couple of, maybe a minute, minute and a half of time lapse. Let's get this place organized a little bit and get back at it. so close now only two left to go and then all my outboards will be on independent stands and not grouped up in groups of three and I can move them around independently let's wrap up the last two conversions and then let's get all these outboards where they belong and get onto that 35 horse can you see me here I am it's so nice outside I opened up the garage door it was at 54 degrees in my shop. It's 64 degrees outside. Let's let that heat in. I know you folks that are from around, from around other parts of the country down south would say, turn your heat on, buddy. Here, where I'm at in Iowa, 64 is a hot day this time of year when it's March. Anyway, let's get back to the time lapse and enjoy the video. Hang on, stay tuned. If you made it, make it through the next couple of minutes, there's some special things coming. I want you to be there for it. Don't miss out. Back to the time lapse.
All right, folks, if you made it this far, it's much appreciated. I want you guys to smash that thumbs up and I want you to hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Let's make this channel go up, up, and up and away. I've got some exciting stuff. I've been sitting around, I haven't released a video in over 35 days. And I've been sitting around thinking, I shouldn't be sitting around, I've been cleaning, doing work, catching things up and trying to wrap my head around what am I gonna do this summer on this channel? What am I gonna do to keep it exciting and interesting? Well, everybody likes a giveaway. So I'm gonna give away something pretty simplistic, but I'm gonna give it away. But I'm gonna go through and show you all the projects that I've got going on right now. And what I want you guys to do, spoiler alert, I got them on the board back here. I want you folks out there to select my next project and I'll start on it the following weekend. This video will release uh, probably Sunday night, Monday morning, I don't know, sometime in that time frame. But we're gonna get, <clears throat> I'm going to use your votes on what project I need to work on and focus next. I'm like the dog that's thought I saw a squirrel. Anyway, I need to be focused. I need you guys to help me focus. I've got one, two, three, four, five different projects right now. Could be six. Let's go with five for now. Anyway, that I want to work on, and I'm like, oh, I'll go over here and take a bolt off here. I was like, oh, cool, this one needs to read, but oh, wait, 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 this one, this one's got a bad, pro oh, oh, cracked block, you know, it's just mind boggling, right? So I want you guys to help me, help me. Would you guys to help me, help me? Yeah, that works, why not? Anyway, what I'm gonna do, see if I can keep this straight. This is unrehearsed, guys. It's just me and my camera and in my shop, you know? And every now and then somebody pops their head in. First and foremost, I wanna let everybody know that all these outboards I work on on this channel are my outboards. These are outboards that I purchase, I work on, I get running, and when I feel they're worthy, and they get the RMD creation stamp of approval, then I'll sell it. So I know a lot of you ask me that. Do you sell your outboards? Yes, when I'm done with them and I've tested them and, and, I'm, and I'm like falling out of love with it, it's time for it to go down the road. Other people ask me, do you work on other people's outboards? The answer is absolutely not. Uh, I don't like that pressure. Parts are hard to come by. People want their boats to get in the water. Next thing you know, you know, people will tell you, I don't, I'm not in a big hurry for it, in a big hurry for it. Four days later, hey, can you have that ready by this weekend? Who needs that crap? Not this guy. Let the marinas do that stuff. But the marinas don't work on what I work on. The marinas, you take any of my outboards that I work on to a marina and they'll go, ooh, it's gonna cost you more than it's worth. You should buy this new one from me over here. That happens. Now, you folks that work at marinas and work on outboards at marinas, tell me if I'm lying. Just put down in the comments, you're lying. I'll understand exactly what you mean. But what I'm gonna tell you happened, because I've, because guess what? Half of these outboards I have in here was a result of that very thing. <laughs> and so I got them on the cheap because they were broke and busted. I'm gonna make them like new hotness. Maybe not all of them, maybe some of them. There's some of them I buy for, for just for parts. Anyway, we're gonna go around the room. I'm gonna show you each one of these projects and kind of what they entail. I want you to write down, and I'll put it in the description right here. Okay, you don't see it yet because I haven't put it there. But you'll see a list as I say each one of these and go through it, you will see what the project is and you will put it in the comments down below. That's the first thing. Whoever, whoever, I should say, whatever project gets the most votes is what I'll work on next. On top of that, on top of that, everybody that voted for that winning project will put your name in a drawing, like I've done in the past, and you'll win a hat in my favorite color, camouflage. I don't buy any other hats, I buy camouflage. And I'm gonna have something embroidered on the hat. Not gonna tell you what it is, complete surprise. So, something else to look forward to. I won't even tell you what it is until you've won and I've shipped it to you and you've cut open the box and pulled it out and go, I'll be, yeah. That's how we're gonna do this, folks. Keep the suspense alive, right? Gotta keep the romance alive. Anyway, uh, that's, that's the first thing. Gonna give away a hat. Second thing, if this video, this one right here, gets 
2,000 likes. 2,000 likes. And then I'll put everybody that leaves a name in the or leaves a comment. Good, bad, ugly, I don't care. Anybody that leaves a comment will be put in a drawing for another hat. Two hats. That's two hats. All right. Sound fair? Anyway, we're going to keep it simple. So yeah, come on, folks. Let's get this channel going. Let's get up to 2,000 likes on this video. Let's make it go nuts. And then we're going to keep building on these projects until I get them all done. And then we're going to do it all over again. I'll pull in three or four more projects and let you guys select again. Let's keep the love alive for these outboards. Let's keep these old outboards on the water, making waves, catching fish. Okay? Makes sense? Now... You've stayed with me this long. Now let's look at each project and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about each project and a little bit of history behind it of what I know anyway, if nothing else, okay? Let's go over here to Mr. Mercury first. <laughs> I just had a good idea for hat number three. Yeah, I'm giving away three hats after this video is all done and all the results are in. And when I post my next video, that's when you'll know who the winner is. Anyway, right here, I've got two Mercury's. This is a 20 horse. Right here, if you see it right here, this is the, the gearbox that I pulled off of this 20 horse. This is the one I bought off a guy for a really reasonable price. It says it kicks and then dies. Kicks and then dies. I'm like, okay, that should be easy. It means it's got a little bit of a spark. Just doesn't have a continuous spark. But then I pulled the gearbox off, and lo and behold, these splines, the drive splines that go up into the in the power head are half wore out. I mean, they're literally half wore out. Well, today, this very day I'm doing this part of this video, I was on the old Facebook marketplace, which is a, a bad place for me to hang out because it gets me in trouble. Found another 20 horse. The guy originally had it listed for $250 and then had it on there. At least, at least it has a slash through the 250. Sold it to me. Had it online for 50 bucks. I'm like, ah, I can't move my thumbs fast enough. And I put it out there, and he says, got another guy coming to look at it. Well, it's pretty clapped out. And that's exactly what I was looking for. Pretty clapped out version of this thing, right? And I'm hoping that, like, Mer like Evan Rude, that Mercury stayed in similar years. I don't even know what year this is. The little badge is missing. I'm going to have to go in identify some stuff, possibly off some engine head numbers, or there is a little number that's on the um, frost plugs. If we do this one next, I'm gonna tell you how to, how to do that, how to figure out what year this one is and see if these two uh, gearboxes will interchange. So I picked this up. I told the guy, if the, other, if the first guy passes, let me know. I got three fresh 20s for you, $60 bills. 20s, 60 dollar bills. Let's go with three $20 bills for 60 bucks. Anyway, and the strangest thing I've ever done on Facebook Marketplace happened with this one because I get partway there and he goes, I might not be here. And I, had, I drove an hour and a half. It was 75 miles one way. I drove an hour and a half to get there. I got about 30 miles out. And he's like, I might not be home. It's sitting on the front deck. Leave the money under the doormat. Who does that? Who does that? I'm, th I'm thinking to myself... What am I getting into? Look over at my wife and going, should we still go? This seems kind of sketch. Oh, well. So, worst case scenario, I, uh, the guy claims I didn't pay him the 20 bucks, and he tracks me down. But uh, I look for the good in all people, and, uh, and this one so far, he claims he got the money. It just felt weird leaving cash underneath the doormat, you know. You leave a key to go in your house under your doormat so people can rummage through all your stuff, but cash? <laughs> I guess it's not much difference, is it? Anyway, 60 bucks I got this thing. It can he said it been dropped, fell, did something. This case right up in this area here is cracked. It's got a big old crack in it. Um, it's got a lot of parts on it. Uh, the skeg on the bottom has got a piece missing about that big. So if I do this one and the gearbox is good, I'm going to show you how to weld the skeg. Because people go, oh, you break your skeg, you know, and it's out in the water. And you can't find your piece. And you guys might have seen one of my videos where I... Welded it, broke one intentionally, welded it back on. It's still around here somewhere because it, it just turned out so beautiful I can't get rid of it. Um, anyway, 
I'm going to show you how to recreate a piece, put it on there, and make it look like it never was broke again, broke before. So we're going to do that. Anyway, I think that's enough about the 20 horse Mercury. I'll put the year somewhere in here, maybe over here, maybe down here. Why don't I put it over here? Yeah, we'll put it over here. Anyway, enough about the 20 horse. This is the 20 horse group, right? Cool beans. On to the Evinrude. I think it's a 68 Evinrude 18 horse. Let's go over there. All right, 1968 Evinrude 18 horse. Oh, well, the power head's not here. It's, uh, it's laying in a pile over there. A little history behind this one. I bought this uh, 18 horse power Evinrude off a guy. I drove about an hour or so away. Usually everything, everywhere I go to find one of these things is over an hour away for some reason. But then my wife and I find a reason to go there, piddle paddle around little things and do a little shopping and then come home with our prizes. Anyway, $90. He goes, guarantee it runs. He goes, I just had it out last week and it, did, it took my boat. It was so hilarious because he said, my boat went over 38 miles an hour with this, on this 14 foot John boat with this 18 horse uh, he goes, had my GPS, GPS on my phone, <laughs> went 38 miles an hour. I'm like, I said, well, that's awesome. That thing really hauls butt, don't it? It had a bronze prop on it, you know, which ain't magic, right? Um, it didn't actually, it didn't all of a sudden, uh, turn this thing into a turbocharged nitrous unit and I don't know, turn in 20,000 RPM. But anyway, it, uh. I got it home, threw it in the old dunk tank back here, rip, rip, and it ran. And it ran actually pretty good. So then I started going, well, this runs really good. And it looked like, I don't know, Johnny Cash's one piece at a time outboard, honestly. It had a different color hood. It had a different color gearbox. And uh, I mean, no, there was no two pieces that matched. It was just like, what happened? You know, the guy's had this thing a long time. He just decided he needed to part with it. He got him a little more modern piece of equipment. Anyway, I took it off his hand for 90 bucks. It ran. And then I thought, well, because I just dropped it. I didn't do anything. Didn't change the gearbox oil or anything. And I thought, drop it in, make it run, and it ran. I'm like, okay. Dude was honest. Wasn't lying. $90 outboard that runs. Now, did it run great? Ran all right. It ran. I started checking compression. <laughs> That's where the that's where the uh, problem started to come in. Had one cylinder had like 120 pounds, and the other one I can't remember now. I know it was way less than 60. Call it 58. Anyway, I thought, well, this is a piece of crap. I can't sell this to somebody in this condition, right? So that's where the guy named Badger Bob. He's a he's a follower on YouTube. Leaves comments on my channel on a regular basis. He lives, lives about three hours away from me. He's given me parts on several occasions. On one occasion, he actually just dropped them off at my house. So thank you, Badger Bob. I'm going to bring you up every time this thing is around me. Woo, it's got the Badger Bob aura around it. Anyway, he gave me a clapped out power head that had all the electronics missing on it. And But I checked it, and the compression on each cylinder was like 120, 125. It's like, for, this, for an old 68, it's like brand new. So I'm like, hmm, I'll take this. I got, I got all the electronics on the top of the one that's like ran. And I got this power head that looks, I mean, the thing looks fantastic. It's clean. So I'm going to marry them together. So this is project number two, the 1968 Evan, Ho Evan Rude, uh, 18 horsepower. I think it's a, I don't know if it's a sport twin or the double twin or twins are fun. I don't know. Fast twin. Anyway, that's project number two. Now, we're going to go around the room here. To my right is project number thrice. All righty. If you followed me for... Is that thing on? Did I hit? Did I? Hot diggity, I did it. All right. Anyway, if you follow me for a minute here, a minute or two or ten, this... Johnson 99. It's an 87 or 88. I'll leave the year right about cheer. Uh, Johnson 99 with the big secret. Uh, and the big secret is it's a 15 horse. The only difference is 
this hood. People have asked me over and over again, what's the big secret? What's the big secret? There is no secret. The guy I bought it from put a 99 hood on it so he could go out on these uh, horsepower limited lakes with his 15 horse. I don't know what the big deal is because you still can't make a wake. But anyway, that's the big secret. Now, I got the big secret. If you go back, good God, it's dusty. If you go back and watch some of my videos, I put, I started building and putting this motor together on the back of what I call the banana boat that I now have a 35 horse on because I thought this 15 horse would scoot it right along. It does not. It plows water like I'm getting ready to plant corn. Anyway, I put the 35 horse on there and now we can cruise with two people on it comfortably. I want to put a 50 or 60 on it, but that'll be up to Tahatsu. If Tahatsu you're watching, I want a 50 horse tiller steer long shaft to put on that banana and then we're gonna you know then we'll race jet boats stuff like that i don't know it should go pretty good anyway this big secret was the fact that it was just a 15 horse with a 99 hood that was let's call it clickbait but it was it's all true uh i pulled the motor out of this right here the motor's sitting right here been sitting here engine Let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about the engine motor controversy. This is an engine. You have electric motors. But people don't call these outboard engines. They call them outboard motors. I got a 34, I got a 35 horse Johnson outboard motor on my uh, 1972 Polo Craft. Yeah, we go fishing and catch some walleyes and crappies. But anyway, I don't care what you call it. This engine goes in this, underneath this hood, which is currently naked and bare and perfectly clean now because I've had it cleaned. The big problem I had with this one is once I had it out in the water, it ran for a little bit, plowing, 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 blah, fell on its face really hard. And I put a video out there about that and I did a giveaway on that, on that same particular problem solving thing. Well, bottom line, people were telling me reed valves are bad. You lost compressions, your rings are stuck. Your spark plugs are in backwards. Your spark plug wires are being replaced by your fuel line, or you got fuel line instead of spark plug wires. And I don't know. Anyway, people said lots of neat things. A uh, few people got it right. The top plate on the carburetor was warped. Doesn't let things flow right. Float bowl was cracked. That's why gas was leaking everywhere. So I had a combination of problems. Anyway, I've got all new parts, reed valves, gasket kit. I'm putting this thing back together. This could be project number three. So 1987, if you say 87 or 88, Johnson 9.9 .9 or 15 horse or the big secret, I'll lump all you guys together in the drawing if this is the top dog that gets the most comments. All right. I think there's enough about that. All right, let's move over here to my right to this big boy over here. I'm just going to go around the room. Around and around the room. All right. No idea what the year is. I can't remember which boat I pulled it out of. I pulled it out of a boat that I scrapped because the hull and everything was rotten on it. This is a Mer Cruiser 120 horse. If you guys follow me for a minute, you know that I have one in a big blue boat. I got one in the big green booger out there, and I've also got one in my 18-foot uh, Starcraft that I fish a lot out of and have had on the Mississippi multiple times last year doing some flat out Let's just call it some cannonball runs from lock to lock Anyway had this sitting out there thought the motor was in pretty good shape um, Did a compression test on it. I believe if I remember right we got the compression was good But I, I don't remember honestly this thing's been sitting out there in the back of the Jeep underneath the lean-to for literally whew, It's got to be going on three years at least three years. But anyway, if you pick this one, I'm gonna go through this one piece by piece. I'm gonna show you what to look for on these Merc Cruisers, these 120 horse Merc Cruisers, some little tech tips and tricks I've learned along the way of messing around with them. I'm gonna show you how to put electronic ignition on it. We're gonna rebuild the carburetor on it. We're gonna put new belts, hoses. We're gonna check the water pump out. We're gonna check the alternator to make sure it's alternating. Um, we're gonna make the fuel pump pump. Uh, what else can we do to this thing? We're gonna make it run. So if this is the next project, this is what we'll dive into piece by piece until it's done. So 
The other thing I'm going to do, part of this giveaway thing, is whatever's first, I'll work on first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So we can get through all these projects, and then we'll pick another two to three to four and do the same thing all over again. That will motivate me to get these done in the order that my people that are watching... Hey, wake up. People are dozing off on me. Just hang in there. Hang in there, please. Anyway, the going to watch... I forgot where is that. See, people like that. that per where are you going? Oh, bathroom. Yeah, definitely. Have you ever noticed that when you got to go to the bathroom really, really bad that nothing else in the world freaking matters at all? It's like, got to take care of business right now, folks. Anyway... But anyway, we're going to go through this thing piece by piece. We're going to show you how to adjust valves. We're going to have, I'm going to do valve adjustment in several ways on this. You can do it static, and you can also do valve adjustment when it's running. And I'm going to do that with this motor, this uh, uh, engine. Sorry, this engine. And this is, like I said, 120 horse, four cylinder Mer Cruiser. Anyway, we'll go through this one. I got belts, I got wicks, fuel, or oil filters, and all kinds of fun stuff. Anyway. That's enough about that guy. There again, all these motors, engines, been at least two to three years since any of them ran, to be honest with you. So that'll be a challenge in its own right. Let's go over here to this one. I smell gas. Maybe not. All right, victim number five. This was a 35 horse, 1982, I believe. Let's look at the thing here. I believe it was 1982. Yeah, 1982, 35 horse Johnson. I bought off a guy for 100 bucks. It's a long shaft, remote controls, um, overheated, had a head gasket blown on it. And the paint's a little discolored around the head, but I did pull the head off, head gasket off, or head off, and looked at it, and the cylinder walls still have crosshatch in the cylinders. So we're going to, I bought a new head gasket. I want to put that thing back together. We got the gearbox out of it right here because I was going to rob this gearbox to put in a 20 horse. And they are one year or two years apart. Yeah, that's an 85. This is an 82. And I thought the shaft, I could just pull this shaft out, put the other shaft in, and have a good gearbox for the 85. And no bueno. It doesn't work that way. There's just enough difference down on the bottom end where the pump and stuff drive. Not the same animal. Anywho, we've got it all apart. We're ready to put it back together. And if you guys want to see this one go back together next, leave it in the comments below. Johnson, 1982 Johnson, 35 horse. We'll make this one run. Anyway, um, not much else to talk about on that one other than it's, I got a few things to do to it and I think it'll run again. But you never know till you... Start putting it back together and find out the other things. The other thing, I, I did something here. I'll get you guys in close here in a second. I made, I made a couple of these little platform things with a little tray and little bolt holes so I can take my bolts. When I take these things apart and stand my bolts up in it. And uh, make it, I don't know, look like I'm organized. <laughs> anyway, let me pull you up close and show you what that is. So yeah, that, that's what I did. It's about 15 millimeters thick, 150 millimeter by 150 millimeter. I got it so it holds quarter, five sixteenths, three eighths, and seven sixteenths bolts. So when I pull the head bolts out, I can stack them up in here. Pump bolts out, I can stack them in here to keep them from all getting lost in this area here. But anyway, that's I just kind of put this together as my, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. It's on wheels. I took one of my engine stands. Let me back you off here and I'll show you. So I took one of my engine stands that I built and, and I placed some... Uh, Two bodies and this little apparatus over the top of it so I can slide on it and slide off. Then I built a big enough tray that I could put all my parts in here. I got my little die grinder with wire wheel, putty knife, pressure tester. I keep my Lucas Marine Lube and uh, Allen wrenches and any other kind of things I need. And when I got a place to set my wrenches while I'm working on it. Anyway, it's kind of handy on wheels. I can move it out of the way if I need to and so on. All right, the giveaway. The giveaway for hat number three. I've got this old Wisconsin workhorse, and it's it's a heavy one. I mean, this thing ran three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, 
And I picked it up. This is no joke. When I picked that thing up, it was at a, an auction that was so remote. I don't know how anybody could find it, but there was a lot of people there. And it was when I was heading out to, where was I heading? Danville, Iowa? It was a ways from here, an hour or so away. What was I doing? Pecking up another outboard motor. Anyway, and my wife swears that I can sniff these things out. And this, this, this is what's funny. Got to tell this story. Driving into rural Iowa, two-lane road, I see this little paper sign on the side of the road on a stick. I mean, you're driving down this road at 60 miles... 55 miles an hour doing the speed limit and I happened to just go looked at my wife and I said that's that auction spun around went down this gravel road went two miles down a gravel road going this is in the middle of nowhere I swear I'm going to start hearing banjos anyway get to another turn I mean this is a four way stop in the middle of dirt road and two lane and it had auction another little sign that went like told my wife i'm like let's keep going it was literally like from the first sign at least five plus miles away and only three signs between that point and the in the auction pull up there and i'm like there is a lot of buggies here <laughs> it was for lack of a better term it was an amish auction there was a lot of stuff there, but and there was a lot of Amish folk there. And here I am dressed up in Hawaiian shirt, shorts, my old shoes and short socks with my old auto darkening glasses, right? Walking around going, looking at all this stuff. And I'm surrounded by pretty much 95 plus percent people wearing all their Amish Amish gear right their hats the beards the pants the black the white i mean they were they were everywhere the amish ladies were in there cooking all their baked goods and you dang right i had me some of the best peach pie with homemade vanilla or churned ice cream and uh it was good but we're walking around there looking up and down walking up and down the wagons and i'm like ooh, that's kind of cool ooh, that's neat Honey, I found what I'm here for. There was a 99 Mercury there. Out of all this other stuff, there's a 99 Mercury laying there. And I said, This is what we came for. This is what I smelled when I saw that sign. <laughs> and she's just like in her head, like she always does to me. Anyway, we waited around for two and a half hours. In the meantime, I bought this Wisconsin, Wisconsin workhorse. And it has an electric start on it. It has a lot of fabricated things on it for whatever reasons, right? Anyway, at the auction, they boo, hit the button, and it starts and runs. That's five years ago. It hadn't ran since. No reason why it won't run again. But part of the giveaway, if you've hung around this far, you guys are in, you guys are, you guys are glutton for punishment. Anyway, you hung around this long. That motor, I went to pick that engine. Yeah. I went to pick it up off the hay rack. I thought, well, I can just bear hug it, walk it over, <laughs> set it in the trunk of my car. <laughs> no way. That sucker weighs a bunch. I ain't kidding you. <laughs> I don't know what it weighed, but I know if I bent over two inches, I was going to the ground. My back was gonna like snap right in two. No way. Anyway, so I waited, and then I backed the car up to it, and then I, just kind of shoveled it into the back seat because it's easier to go in the back seat than to reach over in the trunk, believe it or not. Anyway, I got that thing home. But anyway, part of the, for the third hat, the person that wins the third hat will be the person that guesses the weight of that engine. I'm going to use my deer hanging scale thing and we'll pick it up right here with my hoist with that on it. And whoever comes to the closest weight of the actual weight of that thing as it sits on the floor. I won't do anything to it. It's got electric start, gas tank, fancy piece of beaver gnawed out angle iron on there for a lifting device hook and uh, two little pieces of wood on the bottom. Anyway, you guess what the closest that weighs out of all the people that guess the weight. So here's the deal. Here's how we're going to get some good comments here. You got to leave a comment on which project we're going to work on. 
you got to leave another comment, a separate comment, because you put both in the same comment. I'm going to take which one. If you say I'm going to, I'm going to say the 20 horse Mercury, and I'm guessing 80 pounds on that. Wisconsin. Ooh, did I give it away? No, I didn't give it away. I haven't weighed it yet. I don't know. Um, but if you put 20 horse Mercury and then 80 pounds for that, that goes in the 20 horse Mercury pile, and the 20 horse doesn't count, or the 80 pounds don't count on that line. So you got to leave a comment that says what project you want me to work on. You got to leave the second comment. That's two. One, two. Second comment. How much does that weigh? Put your guess. You can put 80 hashtag. You can put 57 hashtag. Or you can put LBS. Or you can put P-O-U-N-D-S. I don't care. Leave a number. You'll put your, I'll put the, the comment in the drawing. And we'll go from there. Anyway, I thought that would be kind of fun. And I will get that thing running. Uh, but if it's, and if you want that to be part of the, part of what you want to see run next, I don't care. Put Wisconsin on there next. That'll make six things, right? Six projects. I don't care. That's fine with me. Anyway, well, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of, I don't know if this was show and tell or Michael's got too many irons in the fire. I don't know. Anyway, folks, get out there, like, like the video. Give me that thumbs up. Let's hit 2,000 likes. That's two with three zeros. Let's get 2,000 likes on this video by the time the next video comes out and everybody's in the drawing that leaves a comment for a, a hat. Okay? And there again, not telling you what the hats are, not what they're going to say. They will actually, I will announce the winners. And I will mail the hats, and I will thank you for that, and you'll see what they say once I know everybody has their hats in their hand, okay? Anyway, well, that's, this is going to inspire me to get busy, get back after it. I know it's been a long pause, but sometimes you need a break. It's been cold. It's been a long winter, and the water's just starting to get less firm, so you could drop a boat in it. One of my goals, I'm going to sell a couple of boats this summer most likely, and one of my goals is to get me a a 14 foot extra wide. I'm talking extra wide. I'm talking 70 inches. And it, gosh, dang box elder bugs. Anyway, we're going to get, uh, I want to get an extra wide because I want to be able to throw these 35s on there. The Frankenstein that's still sitting over here. I want to get a bigger boat that I can drop these things on and feel more secure on the water with a little bit bigger motor because putting a 35 horse and a 25 horse on the back of the old sea nymph is a little sketchy. I'll do, I'll do it. Uh, there's a 20 horse on there right now. Scoots it right along. With me by myself, moves it along pretty darn good. And uh, as light as the boat is, and you hit a few wakes, it feels like leaves a mohawk in the seat you're sitting in. Let's put it that way. Anyway, what else can we talk about? Just some of the other outboards that are in the herd that are waiting to be worked on. I got some old Mercury's, old Everwoods, and old Johnson's. I got a mixture of everything. Uh, some of them I'm just going to part out. Some of them are going to be parts for other projects like that 20, uh, 20 horse I picked up today. And uh, that's it. Anyway, folks, like, subscribe, enjoy life. If it ain't broke, fix it till it is. This is Michael saying, see you on the next video, and I'm out of here. Golly. Hope I can remember everything. Might have to play the video back to write some stuff down so I get it right.